comment, and subscribe for more content. Where's the notification bell? It's to the right of you. Oh. What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Podcast. I'm DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And I'm Nelson. And I have a full time job at Best Buy. Get the f out of here, Nelson. No one asked you to be on the podcast. Okie dokie, are you jokey? Anyways, guys, in today's podcast, we don't have lots of Funko Pops to talk about because we are just getting off of the hype train known as Emerald City Comic Con. We had the retailers sell the pops last week. We're all done Funko Pop hunting for that. We're all done basically our video content for this week as terms to Emerald City Comic Con. So for today's podcast, we will kick off with a What's the Hap segment. Since we haven't done that segment in, I would say, about two weeks, I would say, Followed by, we have our update segment due to the fact that last week we were originally supposed to have it, but we couldn't due to the fact that we had so many Funko Pops to talk about, including the Emerald City Comic Con 2021 exclusives. And then to end off the podcast, we will discuss the first set of March 2021 Funko Pop announcements, which they aren't too bad so far. That's what I'll say so far. So without further ado, let's kick off with the What's the Hap segment. Of course, the segment where we talk about basically what we've been doing the last week or two as terms to watching television shows, movies, playing games, anything in general that we've been doing. What's the Haps, MD? What is the Haps with me? Well, first off, I have to start off with My Hero Academia, which I have been watching. I am in season two, and I'm honestly really, really enjoying the show. I'm not a huge anime guy for the most part, but I'm starting to get more of an appreciation for it, I guess. And My Hero Academia is just great. I really love the way the storyline goes, and the characters are so diverse, which is really, really nice. And I'm excited to see what happens going forward in the show, considering I'm only on season two. I've been watching a ton of Family Guy. I mean, it's on Disney Plus Star, I guess is what you would call it. And unlike Netflix, there's actually all the seasons of Family Guy, which is really, really nice. So I'm starting at the beginning, watching those old episodes I haven't seen in years. And man, just brings me back to my child watching Family Guy and all the nostalgic episodes. And some of those jokes where like, you see it coming because you've heard it before. It's still just as funny as it was the first time you heard it. So yeah, Family Guy's awesome. You guys obviously know that there's not many people that don't really enjoy Family Guy, I feel, nowadays. What else have I been watching? Um, haven't really watched any movies. I've been watching YouTube, like always. Tons of YouTube, whatever it is. For games... Hmm, what have I been playing? I actually recently just set up my video game slash 90s nostalgia room, and I've been playing a lot. N64, I was playing Pokemon Snap the other day. I played some Pokemon Stadium, which was cool. I've been playing a lot of Super Nintendo. I played the remastered, I guess you could say, version of the first Mario game, which I don't really like the remastering. I like to keep it to the classic one on the NES, but I'm really, really happy with the way that room turned out. So vintage gaming is just very, very easy for me to do now that just about every system is hooked up in there. What other games have I been playing? I've been playing NHL with the boys because we do that just about every night, but recently we've kind of been falling off. So it's been about once every few days we've been playing NHL. Pokemon Go, obviously, steady grinding that. I'm on the ninth of 30 days of catching a Pokemon in a row to eventually end up with that shiny Mew. So it's been a grind. Dragon type is going to be very, very hard. You need to catch 30 of each type of Pokemon. And obviously, dragon types, there's not so many of them. But good news is that Gibble is the research breakthrough. So there's going to be at least four Gibbles I can get this month if I do all of the research. But besides that, I don't know. I've been working a lot recently, too. So I haven't had a whole lot of time for shows and movies. But My Hero Academia has been taking up a lot of that time. All right, what's the haps with me? So first off, I want to kick off by saying that I have joined the hype train known as Among Us. Robbie D has got me kind of addicted to Among Us. I've been shredding that game. Yeah, depending on uh, if you're the imposter or the crewmate, it's, it's a pretty fun game. Then for the first time in like three years, 
I busted out my game known as Lego Dimensions, which if you guys don't know what Lego Dimensions is, it is such a crazy game where you have this platform and you have these like microchips that have like different characters on it. And you basically go to different worlds. So like you can be like a Simpsons character and end up going to like the DC universe. It gets crazy like that. Reason I actually busted out that game was because one of the fandoms in that game will actually be a fandom related podcast later on in the year. And to answer anyone's questions right now, no, it is not the fandom that will be announced this upcoming Saturday on our Instagram for our next fandom related podcast, but it is going to be a fandom that we do a fandom related podcast on later on this year. The gym has finally opened up since we've gotten into red zone and out of gray zone. It's a limit of 10 people. And now I actually have to wear the actual cloth mask instead of my face shield, which I'm fine with. And then as of this week, if you're a Canadian, you know that roll up the rim has officially begun. So I've already rolled up four times already because I bought a breakfast wrap or a farmer's wrap, whatever it is, that gave me two extra rolls. And then I got two teas yesterday. You're guaranteed a prize this year, which I know there is the reusable cup I won and there's some points I've won. And then also I had won a $20 gift card to Skull Candy. I can't really use much of that because every headphone on that website is like over a hundred bucks. So it's like great like this is gonna help me a whole lot but i still got that 20 dollars skull candy gift card other than that last week was emerald city comic-con funko pop hunt it was uh pretty cool and then uh yeah so it's just so happens actually now that we're getting off the train known as emerald city comic-con i've noticed from a couple of people sharing that there indeed will be a train we have to transfer on known as the wondercon 2021 train there was a leak for a wondercon 2021 pop and I'm not going to mention what the pop I may or may not have seen was, just in case there are people out there who don't like leaks, which I feel like I'm the only person in the world who hates leaks. But the only thing I will say is that the sticker on the pop looks really, really cool. As terms to TV shows, Riverdale, I thought I missed an episode last week, but I guess there wasn't an episode last week, so I'm still caught up on the show. I started watching Masters of the Universe, but I haven't really watched much of it. And I don't know if it's because I kind of got bored of it or because I haven't had really much time with it. I feel like maybe it's a mix of both, especially because there's an episode that I seen that was like a repeat where it was like I watched the first episode and then like that episode played again when it was like episode four or something. So I'm like, what? The website I was watching it on was just all screwy and there's no actual like streaming websites. You have to go to like those third party websites to go watch Masters of the Universe because like Netflix or Amazon Prime and all those don't have it. So I have to go watch it there. But I'm going to try to finish the season, even though that I'm on episode 10, I want to say, and one entire season is 65 episodes. So it's going to be rough to try to get through that. And then I feel like I have to end on WandaVision. The series is now over. What a crazy end to the last episode of WandaVision. There's actually the Funko Pops that got announced that we will be talking about later on for that, which is going to be really, really cool. It's sad that it's probably the end because it's only a mini series. There's not going to be a season two, or at least I don't think there's going to be a season two. But next week also is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm kind of thinking I'm like, I'm not really excited, but maybe they will exceed my expectations. Kind of like WandaVision, honestly. We'll see how that turns out. So I'll definitely be watching that first episode, or maybe they'll pull off the same thing they did with WandaVision and air two episodes. All right, so now we will move on to the update. So for those new to the podcast, the update is the segment where we basically take our top 10 list from the previous month. And because we had some pops missing from the original top 10 list, we now are giving these pops a chance to make it onto our top 10 list, which do include the Emerald City Comic Con pops. So definitely, I can already say for my list, my list kind of got flipped and turned upside down in this case. So we'll kick off like usual with MD Shady. What is your updated list, if any, which I feel like there definitely is some pops that got added to your list. Yeah, starting at number 10 is the Walmart exclusive Alexander Hamilton. I love Hamilton. I think it is a very, very good movie, play, show, whatever you want to call it. And I think this is cool. And it's cool that we're getting an exclusive version, even though it's not the greatest. I still feel like it is a pretty cool pop. And then at number eight, I have Tommy and Billy from WandaVision. I feel like Tommy and Billy are better pops than Pietro, but I felt like there was stuff that was better than that two pack. So 
At number six, we have the NBA mascot of the Toronto Raptors, which is super, super cool. We're obviously Canadian, and that is the team that we cheer for. So cool to see that. Then at number five, I have the Emerald City Comic Con exclusive Boney Tony, which I do own now, and that pop is really, really exciting and cool. At number three, I have the Treasure Skeleton from Pirates of the Caribbean. That pop is super cool, glow in the dark, a lot of detail, and it's limited, which is cool, but at the same time, I probably will not get my hands on it, which is disappointing. At number two, I have the Green Ogre, which is limited to 3,000 pieces, and I might not get my hands on that either, unless I fork out some money, which I've been thinking about, and I think I probably will do because I really, really want this pop, and I enjoy it a lot. And then my number one stays the same. So you guys can watch the podcast where we discuss that if you want to know what my number one was. My updated list, yeah, it has changed a lot. So taking the number 10 spot is the Emerald City Comic Con shared with Hot Topic exclusive Boney Tony. Really cool pop, especially looking at it while like filming the review video that was posted this past Tuesday. It was originally going to go to the Zack Snyder four pack, but I felt oh, Boney Tony looks way better though. It's not a black and white pop, but I think the reason it's at number 10 is because there wasn't as much hype as the rest of these pops, in my opinion, but the detail's still cool. And I really like this pop. Then going to number seven, because my number three and number two from last week are number eight and nine, respectively. So number seven is the Emerald City Comic Con shared with Walmart exclusive Dwight Schrute as Kerrigan. Personal reaction mainly is the reason why this pop is on the list, because I like The Office. I'm going to be a completionist of The Office, and I ordered this pop off of Aussie Collectibles, along with some other pops, which should be a mail call video within the next week or two, I would say. But it's not higher up because I felt like there was more hype for these next pops. Coming in at number six, it is the Emerald City Comic Con shared with Walgreens exclusive Spider-Man 2099. I think this pop looks really, really cool. I've been kind of wanting a new Spider-Man 2099 pop just because I haven't gotten my hands on the original one, and I don't think I will. Why it's kind of in the middle is because I felt like there should have been more added to it. Like, it should have been doing a pose. It just kind of looks like it's holding an invisible cup of coffee in the actual pop itself. So that's kind of why it's lower on the list. Coming in at number five, it is the Amazon exclusive The Winter Soldier for that Year of the Shield set that's coming out. Really cool in detail, the shield and how there's scuffs on it, and then just the overall updated look of the Winter Soldier pop looks really, really cool compared to previous Winter Soldier pops. And of course, it makes sense this is being released right now because of the Falcon and Winter Soldier show that's coming out next week. So that's why it's up in the top five. Then coming in at number four is the Billy and Tommy two-pack Emerald City Comic Con shared with Amazon exclusive. This probably, in my opinion, is the best WandaVision pops that have been made, at least thus far. I think it's a really, really cool two-pack. And this thing sold out in literally seconds. I went on Amazon's website and it was just out of stock. And it's like everyone just went right after it. So there definitely was hype for this. Coming in at number three, it is the Emerald City Comic Con shared with Funko Shop exclusive Najiri Hado from My Hero Academia. Really, really detailed pop. That's basically the reason why it surpassed Billy and Tommy. Otherwise, I felt like it would have been number four if it didn't have that much detail, especially because this is kind of like a newer character. Like this is one of the big three as they call it, and is from one of the newer seasons. So I don't really know much about the character or didn't really pay attention to the character all that much, but it has a lot of detail and there was an extremely huge amount of hype as terms to this pop. So that's why it's in the top three. My number two was originally my number one, but of course it's now number two because my number one pick is the Emerald City Comic Con limited to 4,000 piece glow in the dark treasure skeleton pop deluxe this thing looks absolutely crazy cool we got the detail of the skeleton head you got the pile of gold and the treasure chest it glows in the dark people were hyping over this and my personal reaction was pretty up on this because of how detailed the pop was so definitely think that the treasure skeleton was indeed the best pop of february 2021 
All right, so now we will move on to the March 2021 Funko Pops, which, like I mentioned, there aren't that many, which is understandable because we're just basically leaving the hype train known as Emerald City Comic Con. So they weren't really announcing much because of the whole virtual con that happened last week. So starting off March 1st, we have ourselves some new WandaVision Pops. Agatha Harkness, The Vision, and then we have a glow-in-the-dark variant of The Vision that will be a Walmart exclusive, and those are expected to release as early as May 2021. On that same day, Funimation had announced their own exclusive Flocked Karen from Dragon Ball Z, in which that is available now to purchase on Funimation's website. Then on that same day, Walking Dead had announced their own exclusive pop of a gold Rick Grimes from, of course, The Walking Dead. And this will be a part of the next Walking Dead supply drop subscription box in which it's unknown of when it's being released, but it is available now to order. Then on March 2nd, Hot Topic had announced their own exclusive of the SpongeBob Weightlifter, which this is available now both online and in stores. Then on March 3rd, Pop Culture had announced an exclusive glow-in-the-dark variant of Edgar Allan Poe for the Pop Icons lineup, which this is available now to order on Pop Culture's website with most likely restricted shipping, and then it will be released in Canada in the U.S. at a later date. Then moving on to Monday, March 8th, Funko had announced a Venomized Gwenpool, which this will be an EB game slash GameStop exclusive in which this is available for pre-order now and is expected to release as early as April 2021. On that same day, Funko had also announced an artist series Pinocchio, which this is going to be an Amazon exclusive. This is available for pre-order now and is expected to release as early as June 2021. And then the last pops we're going to talk about are also WandaVision pops. Funko had reannounced a wave of WandaVision pops, which we've talked about most of these throughout the last couple of weeks, especially just talking about the Agatha Harkness and the Vision pops, but they added two more pops to it, and it is two variants of Scarlet Witch. One is her floating with the book, which will be a common, and then there's one of her levitating, which will be a Hot Topic exclusive, and those are available for pre-order now and are expected to release as early as May 2021. So I guess I will kick off with the Agatha Harkness. I was thinking about just talking about all the WandaVision pops all at once, but I thought I'll do it this way. So the Agatha Harkness pop is really, really detailed. I love the outfit. I love kind of like the purple flame that's in her hand. I think it's a really, really great looking pop. And I'm glad that they ended up doing an Agatha Harkness pop. I'm hoping eventually they do like an actual Agnes pop where either it's like a color variant or you can do the black and white like 50s or 60s variant. I think either way, that would be really, really cool, especially, and this would be a great touch, have her do the wink. I think that would be so great if she does the wink in the Funko Pop like she did in the show. Then we got the vision, which this is pretty cool. This is obviously like the imposter vision that we've seen in the very last episode of WandaVision. And I think people seen in the end credits for episode eight, which is really, really cool. I'm kind of excited to see how the glow in the dark variant looks in person, I should say, because of course the blue looks nice in the glam shot, but we've had a history of blue not being the greatest color when it comes to glow in the dark. So I'm not going to get too excited about this glow because it might end up being a disappointment, but it's still cool that they're just milking some WandaVision pops because I think it deserves a huge set of pops. Then we got ourselves the flocked Karen or Kareen, however it's pronounced from Dragon Ball Z. This is an okay looking pop. I don't exactly know what the hype is all like and what everyone is saying due to the fact that Funimation didn't post this on their social media. It was just posted on their website. So I don't know what really many people are thinking. This is okay. And it totally makes sense that this is flock because from what I'm looking at, it's clearly a cat. And I'm kind of curious about that whole cane that Karen is holding. Maybe this is a human character that was transformed into a cat. I don't know. I don't watch Dragon Ball. So if you know about this character, comment in the comment section below then we got ourselves the gold rick grimes <sighs> i don't really understand why funko is continuing to make walking dead pops i know the series is still continuing but it's like especially for these subscription boxes where the pops are just so terrible like they did this with the star wars smugglers bounty 
you're currently doing this with the Marvel Collectors Corp, where you're just you're making these subscription boxes and you're throwing garbage pops. And this might be one of, if not the worst pop added to a subscription box overall. I feel bad for people who want to get this box mainly for the pop, and the pop is just trash. Like, I'm sorry, but it's just it's not cool. Like, the only thing cool about it is probably that Walking Dead supply drop sticker. But other than that, a gold pop or a gold chrome pop, whatever it may be, not. Nah. SpongeBob weightlifter, really, really sweet pop. I love the facial expression of SpongeBob trying to lift the weights, which clearly is just a plush of a bunny and a teddy bear. We actually showed this pop off on Monday's video for the haul because I picked this one up for MD. Yeah, the facial expression is really, really cool. And that's one thing I do like about SpongeBob pops is that they have mouths on them, which totally makes sense because SpongeBob does make a lot of facial expressions. So he definitely deserves to have a mouth on his Funko Pop. Then we got the glow in the dark Edgar Allan Poe. What was the point of making this glow in the dark? I can already tell that what's going to glow in the dark is that skeleton head. Like that's the only thing I could see glow in the dark. I can't see like his suit glow in the dark because he's wearing a black outfit. I kind of find this pointless. I feel like Funko should have made some sort of cooler icon pop instead of making a glow in the dark variant of an already existing pop. And I don't even know if this pop actually sold well, to be honest. Like, I feel like there's stores I've been to that still have an Edgar Allan Poe pop, like maybe even our EB Games. I don't know how many people were actually super pumped, or at least from what I can remember, were actually super pumped about an Edgar Allan Poe pop. Then we got the Venomized Gwenpool. I don't even think I've ever heard of Gwenpool. Like, I know there's Gwen Stacy, and then there's Deadpool, and I feel like they're mixing the two together. I don't exactly know, but this isn't the worst Venom pop, but this isn't the best Venomized pop that has been made. I do like the detail involving the mouth, and I like the pink eyes because it actually makes the whole, like, dark blue outfit kind of stand out. And I'm kind of curious about the whole gimmick with the drumsticks. She's got the drumsticks and she's got what looks to be a cell phone in her hand also. It's a really detailed pop, but I obviously don't think I'm going to get this one. Artist Series Pinocchio. This is okay. Once again, it's not the worst Artist Series pop, but it's not the best Artist Series pop. I'm kind of liking the designs that are going on with like the globe. And I can't really tell what the other designs are, to be honest, within this Artist Series pop. But I'm sure that people are going to end up getting this, especially if you are a completionist for Pinocchio and you want to get that 30th anniversary lineup completed ASAP. And then we got the Scarlet Witch pops, which these things look so sweet. The common variant is actually her in the end credits scene where she is reading kind of like the spell book that was originally Agatha's, which is really, really sweet. I'm sure a lot of people are going to want this Funko Pop. And then the levitating variant is also very cool. So much detail and it's cool. They ended up making like not Wanda Maximoff, but actually Scarlet Witch for this series of pops. And the newly updated Scarlet Witch outfit is really, really cool, honestly, compared to like the original variants. But you still got that classic feel of the Scarlet Witch costume, which I know that the Hot Topic variant already sold out in pre-orders and you can't even like pre-order on the website right now and can't find like a link. Or you could probably find a link, but it'll say sold out because everyone's wanting these WandaVision pops because it is such a hyped show at the moment all righty starting off with agatha this pop looks really really great but the only question i have is why isn't it glow in the dark and will we see a glow in the dark version i hope so because i feel like this would be really cool to be glow in the dark whether it's just the kind of spell that she has casting in her hand or it's the spell and the dress i feel like either way this needs to be glow in the dark at some point and then the Vision. The Vision is a really, really cool looking pop. And the Walmart exclusive Glow in the Dark is really neat as well. But I feel like this whole pop should have been Glow in the Dark. And then the eyes and the Mind Stone or whatever the hell it's called should have been like the Glow in the Dark that you see there. I just feel like if the whole thing glows in the dark blue and then you have those colors of glow in the dark that pop over that blue. I think it would have just looked a lot better than what we have with just the hands and the face. But nonetheless, it is still a really, really cool pop, and I will probably end up picking this up. And then Karen from Dragon Ball Z. This is really, really cool. I mean, this might be my first Funimation sticker because I do collect Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z pops. And yeah, I guess to elaborate on this character for as much as I know, 
I can't remember the exact pronunciation. I think Funimation dubbed it as like Corin or something, but I believe it is supposed to be pronounced Karen in like the normal subbed, I guess you could say. Karen's a really cool character. I believe he's like a martial arts like master, which you wouldn't really think of when you see a cat. But and I believe he's like super old as well, if I remember correctly. So that's pretty cool. Then the gold Rick Grimes. Yeah, this feels like just are we back in 2014? Honestly, like it's an old style looking pop. I mean, the pop isn't great to begin with, obviously, because it's an older pop and then it's just all gold. Obviously, completionists might really want this pop, but this is the worst pop of the month so far, possibly the worst pop of the year candidate. So eh, obviously I don't like it that much. And then the SpongeBob weightlifter. I own this pop. I love this pop. Such a great moment from the show that I'm sure a lot of fans remember. The facial expression does look amazing. I love how he's biting his lip. This is a really, really exciting, great pop. I hope they keep pumping out SpongeBob pops because there's so many characters they could do. But obviously getting some of those different SpongeBob moments out of the way will definitely be high selling points for Funko. So that makes a lot of sense. Glow in the dark, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, this thing sucks. Why would they do it? Like you said, they could have done a different icon. And I have the perfect candidate for an icon that I know if Funko made this, it would sell like crazy. So Funko, listen to me and I'll take a royalty check whenever. The next Funko icon should be a pop deluxe of Bernie Sanders on the bench wearing his mittens. That would sell like crazy. I know <laughs> it would. I know so, so many people that would love that. Why do we see Edgar Allan Poe glow in the dark? That's true because there's actually a toy company literally the day after that meme came out already in the works of making a Bernie Sanders with the gloves and mittens on. Like they're doing a bobblehead. And speaking of that pop, I actually uh, just got word shared by our good friends over at K-Dog and Fish. And I actually checked the website to get extra proof is that the Edgar Allan Poe pop will be a Barnes and Noble exclusive in the US, which sounds really understandable because Barnes and Noble is a little notorious for that. You're going to make a be glow in the dark variant of an already existing pop or it's two commons put into a two pack. So I just want to let everyone know. I mean, you guys probably would have already known since we are recording this on a Wednesday. You guys would be listening to this on a Friday, but Edgar Allan Poe glow in the dark Barnes and Noble exclusive. All right. Now you can continue on. All righty. So I guess next would be the venomized Gwenpool. I'm surprised you don't know who Gwenpool is because I feel like over the last three years, there's been quite a bit of hype just for Gwen Stacy in general and Gwenpool. Yeah, you guys know my feelings on the venomized pops, but to give it the benefit of the doubt, this pop does look pretty cool. I am, I guess you could say, a fan of Gwenpool. I like the character design. And this pop looks neat. I love how they went with kind of that dark purple color, which Venom, I believe that was like, if I'm not mistaken, more of like his debut color rather than the black. It was that purple color. So that's cool rather than getting the pink and the white. And I really love how kind of the symbiote is holding the different things. Like it looks like drumsticks and I would assume that'd be a cell phone if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but this might be my favorite Venomized pop. And that says a lot, or maybe it doesn't say a lot because I just hate all of them, but this is all right. So it should be happy that I'm giving it that at least. Then the, I believe we've been calling it artist series, but if I look at the corner of this picture, it does say art series. So I'm not sure what to call it. I'll just call it artist series because that kind of makes sense to me. And it's Pinocchio, obviously. I don't know how to feel about this. My first thought is like, okay, it's another artist series. And then it feels like, okay, this is a kind of a cool pop to make in an artist series, but there's just kind of a whole lot going on with it that doesn't look amazing. I don't know. I just wish that we would get artist series pops that were like pretty good. I mean, that one Scooby-Doo was all right. And I believe besides that, there hasn't been much that has really caught my attention because I'd love to have an artist series pop that I really, really enjoy. But so far, Funko just hasn't made any that have really stood out to me. And this is just, it feels scrambled. There's so much on here. If I can kind of list up, there's like a globe, there's a book, there's an apple. I don't know if those things are just duplicated over and over again. I think there's like a a piece of paper rolled up is what it looks like. And then the background is kind of just a bunch of numbers and letters, which I don't remember the significance of that in Pinocchio. Maybe I'm just having a blonde moment, I guess you could say. But overall, this thing isn't the greatest artist series, and it's definitely not one of the greatest pops, especially for the Pinocchio series, which has had a lot of really, really awesome pops. 
And then we have the Scarlet Witch. Both of these are very, very cool. I like how they decided to go with both of them being floating variants, I guess you could say. I really enjoy the one with the book, but I think I like the one with her arms spread out to the side a little bit better. And again, with these WandaVision pops, my question is, when are we going to see the glow in the dark version of this pop? Because out of all of them, I feel like Scarlet Witch makes the most sense to be glow in the dark. All right, guys. So I guess realistically, that is the end of this week's edition of a Funko Popcast. If you enjoyed this edition of a Funko Popcast, make sure you smash that like button. Comment in the comment section below on what your favorite pops were from this week. Did you like the WandaVision pops, the SpongeBob? Let us know in the comment section below. Press the subscribe button for more content like this podcast and any other videos we do on this channel in the future. And press the little bell beside it to be notified of when that future content gets released. And if you haven't yet, Follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at a Funko Podcast. It will be listed in the description below. But anyways, guys, thank you for listening to this edition of a Funko Podcast, and we hope to see you guys next week. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Peace in, peace out. Peace in, peace out, guys. Nelson from Best Buy. Get out of here, Nelson.